Tell me the story of Skinny Girl Margarita. Like, how did you even come up with the idea of it? I don't know. I just read that it was successful. I read about what I've heard you sold it for. But how did the original idea, the impetus for it happen? This is the thing that entrepreneurs need to hear. For me, most of my successes have not been from any sort of big, grand, amazing idea. It's just a practice in my life, something I was doing. I love margaritas and I just wanted to make one that was slightly sweet, but that was not overly sugary, that I could still trust and that it was very drinkable. I wanted to have a signature drink. For some reason, I would walk up to bartenders and I would order it by ingredients. and They'd say, everyone's ordering this thing now. And I thought to myself, how do I get in there? And everybody said no. Every major liquor company said no. I ended up finding a partner. I did it myself. And then the major liquor companies came to buy, to buy it. So that is a perfect example of you know pushing, 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 keep going. All right, welcome back to the show, everybody. I'm really excited to have this lady on the show. I've been trying to get her on for probably about eight months. We've had a bunch of almost near hits, but finally we're getting it done today because she's got a big TV show coming out that we'll talk about. You know who she is, but what you might not know is like in 1992, I'm reading about her. She goes out to Hollywood to be an actress. She ends up being <laughs> Paris Hilton's nanny for a while. And then she starts into all these different ventures, which were really interesting for me to learn about her. Stuff like she had her own baking business, she had an event business, she had a scarf business. Some of them did pretty well, some of them didn't do so well. And she keeps trying these different businesses, and then she hits. She does The Apprentice, almost wins The Apprentice, then she gets The Real Housewives of New York, and then, 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 I'm fast-forwarding, Skinny Girl Margarita, and bam, here we are. She's like an entrepreneurial guru, and I'm really interested in picking her brain. And my audience is excited that you're here today as well. She's got a book out called Business is Personal, which we're going to talk about. New show with Kevin O'Leary on CNBC, which comes out Wednesdays at 10 p.m. called Money Court. Bethany Frankel, good to finally have you here. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I love the show, by the way. I watched the preview show that y'all sent me, and it's really good. It's not, not easy to match O'Leary's intensity level but somehow in the show, I think that the combination of the two of you, it's like really kind of gripping debate television, watching the two of you going back and forth. What's it like it, working with him? I'm curious. It's the biggest surprise of my career, to be honest with you, uh, is the way that he and I play tennis and mm -hmm. hit the ball back to each other and elevate each other's game. The sum is definitely greater than its parts. And I don't, you know, I'm the type of person who knows when I'm carrying something and I'm carrying everybody else on my back. And it's not that case at all. It, you literally need both of us because we have such different perspectives. And for the entrepreneur whose cases that we are, arbit that are binding arbitration, it's entrepreneurs that are at an impasse. They cannot move forward and it could be a million dollar business. It could be a hundred million dollar business. They need not only just a verdict, mm. but they need practical advice, yeah. bullet points of exactly what they have to do. And, you know, Kevin would say something and I'd say, I see that. And I raised that because of this. And he, I'd say the same thing. And it was really extraordinary. And um, we both surprised each other immeasurably. It was, yeah. it was phenomenal chemistry. It is. But the book, the business is personal book. Guys, I just want to tell you all this. I read a lot of BS on business books. And I'm like, this person has not built any businesses. And then I read your book. I read the whole book. And I'm like, now this is legit. And there's things in there you say. I just want you to elaborate on because I want you to give some of that master class to my audience today as well. You said something in the book. I'll probably mess it up. But you said success is the interaction, I think you said, of intention and luck at the same time. What 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 is What does that mean? It means that you have to be completely prepared on that boat with everything, with your net, with your fishing rod, with the right boat vessel. I don't fish because I'm allergic to fish. But <laughs> and then the luck is if you can find the fish where the fish are. But if all, all the fish come and that's the luck and you're not prepared, then then you've lost that opportunity. And I just think that and I see this with jobs. I see, see this with the way people work. I mean, it's it's amazing. People are given amazing opportunities and they don't set themselves up for success and really be prepared and go that extra mile. Yeah. So um, that's, it's funny because in retrospect, when I think about that, get off, get off your ass comment that was so controversial. And I commented on it that someone made, it's not that most people don't 
work hard because people are working multiple jobs. It's that you have to work smart. You have to really figure out how to utilize your time wisely and how to set yourself up for success. You yeah. have to be prepared in anything that you do. Yeah, I think it was Kim, my neighbor, who said that. And you commented on something Kim's up to lately, too. I might get into that. I don't know. But I – it was Kim Kardashian. But I I think in your case – see, I think I, – I coach athletes. And one of the things like in Major League Baseball, I know you're in New York. So Isaiah Kiner, actually, of the Yankees, is a guy that I work with a little bit. And in any given Major League at bat, they'll tell you they usually get one pitch to hit. So maybe there's three, four, five, eight pitches, but you're going to get one pitch to hit. And a big league hitter has to hit that pitch or they're going to get out. And I really feel like in business, if you work hard, if you don't work hard, you may never get any opportunities. But if you're busting your ass in business, you're going to get a pitch to hit or two in your life. And that's really what you mean here. When those opportunities arise, you better be ready. That's the separator, right? Like you get that one pitch to hit. If you're not prepped, you're screwed. And I think so many people don't put in the work. For you, I want to go to the skinny girl margarita well, deal. Just yes, what you said, yes. But if you're over, like not to be too intense about it, meaning, you, you know, surfers too. You brought up baseball, we're doing another yeah. metaphor. You got to watch the ocean. You know that you're getting like banged up. You're getting hit. You're in the rip, you know, you're in that impact zone. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you could just step off, stand on the beach, wait till it's, you're not going to be in that. Sometimes people just want to get in there right now. Mm -hmm. Then they got to get beaten up, get into the impact zone, then get out there. Then mm -hmm. you're not going to get that many, but you got to be, you know, if you get one, you better get them all. Like that's when the set comes. And then you got to really be prepared because that's what I've always been good at is I can feel the energy. I can feel, you know, the wolves are always at the end of the bed and you know, when like it's going to go sideways and things are going to go bad or something, you got to always be prepared for both for the good and the bad. So not that you're negative, but you just think like things are going too well right now. I got to calm down because, yeah. you know, that's when you're skiing really hard or whatever you're doing. That's when mistakes happen. So sometimes when things are going really well, I, I don't want everyone so excited. I want everyone to not talk nicely about me so much. Like everyone calm down. Let's just get it to 55 miles an hour. Um, yeah. Because that, you know, so when things are going really well, you got to know that the pendulum will swing. You have to find that balance um, and understand the temperature of the room, but be able to feel when things are going to pop off and be, that's when you be prepared. Like, you got to, you know, things are about to pop off. Let's all get like, get humble and get organized. That's so funny you say that because that's exactly, I, that's so interesting because most people are the opposite. So when things are going really bad is when they're really humble and, or, or they're really down or really hard on the people that work with them. And then when things start to go good, their humility disappears and they're not as demanding or as intentional or paying attention like they need to. And that's why success is hard for people. It's actually the reverse. When you're down is when you need to be showing the most enthusiasm, the most excitement. And when things are difficult, not cynical or skeptical, but concerned or hyper-focused when things go well. That's why most people don't ride long waves in business, because when things get going good, they believe their own press. They believe Look at Balenciaga. Living. It's a perfect example of, of, yeah. of getting all big and now it's a show because mm -hmm. you, you, you get sloppy. Mm -hmm. um, you got to, um, you, first of all, you can't believe your own bullshit. You mm -hmm. cannot drink your own Kool-Aid and that is the biggest mistake that people make. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's about checking yourself. It's about realizing that what's really important and, you know, you just want to keep, like, you don't need anything to be blazing hot or cold. You just want to keep things nice and you, 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 you pull back we had so many metaphors, but I grew up at the racetrack. You pull back the horse when it's like getting away from you. That's not good either. You got to be in control. Yeah. You got to have emotional control. It's one of the, it's interesting that we're going there. I didn't know that we were going to go there today, but that is the main trait of successful people is emotional control. Athletes, uh, politicians that are good governors or whatever, they don't get super high and they don't get crazy low. They find a way to maintain. It. I'm surprised to hear you say that just because my observations of you, I think of Ben that you appear to me to be really an intense person. Yet yeah, very intense. Are you? So that's an accurate thing. And I, I wrote a book called The Power of One More. It's actually the number one business book in the world this year. And I'm reading your book, and you're like, there's a chapter called Make the Call. And then you have this thing called stacking. And you say, Why waste an opportunity? There is always time for one more question. And you appear to me to have, I don't know if you were grew up this way. But you have that thing where, like, you're not concerned about inconveniencing somebody else to get to your own success or to help them. 
Whereas most people are like, all right, I pushed this far enough and they stop. How do you nuance that? Make that one more call, you know, especially. I'm not, I'm not pushy in that way. I'm fair. I mean, you know, I know where the line is. I don't cross the line, you know, and I know I don't, I pick my spots. You know, you have to pick your spots for arguments. You have to pick your spots for uh, asking for raises. You have to pick your spots for blowing everything up. I mean, I I don't do that all the time. Mm. Basically, what I'll do is, like, I have a podcast, Rewives, on, on, on iHeart, for example. And they're an amazing partner. Like, really, I don't have that many partners that are this good. Just let me do whatever I want. And they're fair and they're great. Mm. But it, there'll be, there's... Two, one real email and the one and a half emails that I wrote. I'm like, this is the email when you're just like, look, I don't say things a lot. I'm saying it now. I'm saying these five things. And then the course gets corrected. If you're, if you're doing that every day, it, people don't hear you anymore. Mm. But when you want, when you have something to say, you come in tight, right. And organized and say it, and you'll, you'll get what you want more than just being that like whiner all the time. You're so right. So it's, it's, an, it's an energy too, isn't it? You should be sensing energy. Like, I, That's I, the point. The whole thing is them reading the room. That's what yeah. I was saying about when you can feel the success. Yeah. Exactly. And so I'm friends with some major people in the world. Like, and that's not a name drop. It's just saying for the story, like, let's say I wanted to ask Mark Cuban for something. Sometimes it'll be something comical and stupid mm -hmm. to do because he just is funny. Yeah. But if I had to ask him a real favor, which I haven't, mm -hmm. That's why I don't I wouldn't ask him something, because if I were going to ask someone who already knows that everyone's grabbing at them, I would come in with something real. Yeah. You know, like Mark reached out to me because he heard it was something going through something medical. He reached out to me. He doesn't reach out to me every other day about bullshit I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. That was something. And that made me think, oh, well, that's that. I just won't forget that. But I have certain people that are at a certain level and I won't ask them. They, they'll get, you know, do you want to do my my podcast? But only like only if you want. No problem. Someone else asks them. This isn't my ask. Yeah. I very rarely ask anyone for anything. Yeah, most people. It, no, I don't ask people for things. It's strategic. I just bought a company, and the first day, the first day, I haven't even been. I didn't even own the company. Announced that I own the company for about two hours, and this man walked in and asked me for a raise, and I'm like, "Could you have picked a worse spot?" First off, it's a Monday. I just bought a company. Can you imagine what's? Don't you also those people that send you the long text message on a Monday morning? I'm like, dude, it's Monday morning. The whole world blows up on Mondays. Um, this guy strategically did not understand the timing of when to ask the question, read the room, feel the energy, right? It's the same thing in business and in life. So I totally agree with that. How did, how did the, tell me the story of skinny girl margarita. Like, how did you even come up with the idea of it? I don't know. I've just read that it was successful. I read about what I've heard you sold it for, but how did the original idea, the impetus for it happen? This is the thing that entrepreneurs need to hear. For me, most of my successes have not been from any sort of big, grand, amazing idea. It's just a mm. practice in my life, something I was doing that mm. people were like, whoa. So I was playing games of makeup on the worldwide interwebs. <laughs> I was playing, you know, on the social on social media and people went crazy and it went viral many times. And that became a, a small like. I became a beauty influencer and I didn't know how to do my own makeup. So I just was making margaritas and I, I love margaritas and I just wanted to make one that uh, was slightly sweet, but, but that was not overly sugary that I could still trust and that it was very drinkable. I wanted to have a signature drink. So I just ordered it at a restaurant was made fun of for drinking tequila because before me, women didn't drink tequila unless they were in college drinking dark tequila. It wasn't like the tequila soda lifestyle yeah. of what women are living now. Um, and I was sort of being made fun of for ordering tequila and explained the name of what I called this drink, but it wasn't formal. I was just saying it's a skinny girl's margarita. I had an S which felt like Facebook when he said, remove the, the, yeah. Um, but, uh, and it was a massive question on the housewives in the reunion by viewers what is in that and that's the point yeah. that's the literal example of the interaction between luck and hard work or being prepared because sarah jessica parker knew everybody was talking about the cosmopolitan on sex in the city she could have done an sjp cosmo wow, you know right. she she that that was jumping off the page to us or you know um, and she later did shoes, which was very on brand. But for some reason, I would walk up 
to bartenders and I would order it by ingredients. And they'd say, everyone's ordering this thing now. Mm. And I thought to myself, how do I get in there? And everybody said no. Every major liquor company said no. I ended up finding a partner. I did it myself. And then the major liquor companies came to buy, to buy it. So that is a perfect example of, you know, pushing, 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 keep going. Did it happen without your brand though? What brand? You, Bethany's brand, her social media. The I was nothing. There was no social media back then. There was very, it was just Twitter. And, and, um, did it happen without the Bravo? Yeah. Uh, yes, but much more slowly. Now with social media the way it is now, maybe. Mm. Back then, there was when I started the Housewives, there was no Twitter. Back in my day, there was no, there was no Twitter. <laughs> I was in that day. I know that day. Yeah, there was no Twitter when we started. So later, Twitter was there, and I was one of the first one. I was the first one on it from that genre. But um, no, many things had to happen to make that escalate the television show popped that off for sure but but the television show didn't do anything they don't want to cover that i was jamming it through by being entertaining yeah. with my content and and making sure that that content was entertaining too self-deprecating about the logo being honest i mean there are many things that contributed to that what about someone listening to this and so they're not on the real housewives but now social media is an individual's reality show if they choose it to be and for me i was i was a successful entrepreneur way before social media but I feel like business lately is no longer who you know, but it's more who knows you. A lot of it is who knows you. And for me, unbelievable of opportunities have come my way because I decided to get, you use the word attention and intention in the book, but I've intentionally paid my attention to expanding my, call it my notoriety, my expansion of people hearing about me. It makes all my businesses operate much easier. Do you via agree? what? Yeah, but via what? Are you probably because a publicist or all social media? And are you spending money on it? And yeah, like, my 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 Instagram's got you know I've got two and a half million followers on Instagram. I've got ten million okay. total. My podcast is a top five podcast. But I and seven years ago, I literally had no accounts. I didn't. Wow, that's no. crazy. And so you spent? Did you spend a lot of money on that, or not as much? No, as I I, none. It? Like I had my son was my guy. But, okay. I made, but what I did is I made, I think there's a few ways to get big on social. One's to be entertaining. And another way is to be valuable. And yes. I, I knew a lot. So I was valuable in the beginning. I gave great content for free. Stuff Amazing. that other people charged for, right? But my point, and this isn't about me necessarily, but my point, I think what I'm asking you is, and this is, you know, you're one of the most, let's just take the last 10 years. You're one of the more iconic brands of a female entrepreneur slash entertainment person. I don't even know what that means, but you know what right. I mean. No, I do. I know yeah. because I get because there aren't that many women in business that are also humorous and entertaining that are, you know, you could be entertaining while also being intelligent about business. And I'm finding because of all the offers I get for TV shows and different opportunities in the business space. There aren't that whim many women to, to, to go to. Yeah. And, and by the way, opportunities keep coming your way. Even if you haven't been successful at every single one of them, you had a talk show you talk publicly yeah. about, I didn't like doing it. It didn't work. Bam. Now you got another show. You got a best selling book. You, and I have to believe, I know who you are because you went to LA and then you were, you were on saved by the bell. Like you were, a, you know, working on that show. Are you intentional about Bethany Inc.? her notoriety, her brand. And would you say to a, a young woman right now who's listening to this goes, I'm going to have a, uh, I'm like the two ladies that were on your show with Kevin. I'm going to create a cookie business, a baking business. Would part of your advice be go build your brand also? I just don't think that way because, some, and I, yes, and you have thought that way and it doesn't mean there's a right or a wrong. Mm -hmm. I go from the inside out, not the outside in. So the way you just described it is like build your brand. That's very big. I come the way I came up. There was no word brand. There was no word entrepreneur. Yeah. I wasn't an entrepreneur. I, you know, liked, I liked healthy food. So I went to school for food and healing and became a natural food chef. I liked pashminas. Sorry. I found a pashmina. I liked it and saw a hole in the market. So I ended up selling them, you know, hundreds of thousands of them. I go from the inside out, but that's not that it's right. I, I sit on Instagram by accident looking at blush and then say, oh, wait, there the people are listening. I drink a drink, talk about it, and then hear, wait, the people are listening. Like, I feel the connection. It's like two people, you're rubbing two sticks together unintentionally. You're like, whoa, that, that was something. Mm -hmm. So for me, 
I realize what's resonating and what's true to me. They have to st- they have to align. So if I'm talking about what's going on with um, my medical health and saying I'm so sick of people preaching about non or vaccine or, or everything being political, or if I decide to say a rant on Balenciaga, that's part of my brand in that I'm a person who's known to be truthful, like me or hate me. So that translates into the beauty. Mm-hmm. It means you're being truthful about products and it translates into on television, the Kevin O'Leary and people's businesses. So my brand ultimately is truth and just straight up no chaser. But I didn't decide to make that. It's just what's authentically inside me. And then I decide decide that we have to protect the realm and align with that. So no, I'm not doing that opportunity. And I'm not talking about that mm. because it doesn't align with who I am. And it's who I am and then who I've also mandated with everybody around me that we have to stay to be. Don't, don't stray. Mm. And if you're going to stray, you're mentioning this is an outlier. And sometimes I don't even know it's an outlier. I grew up at the racetrack and I posted something about Giraffe Kings and I, I was like trolled. And I thought, mm-hmm. wait a second, people will spend money on plastic surgery and whatever, but they can't on gambling. Like my audience doesn't want to see that. So I'll either not do that again because I don't want because I understand their perspective, or I say this is my this is where the rubber meets the road between us. Why you do know, you, it, why do you do all this, Bethany? I'm, I I you interest me so much because I read how you grew up. And then I'm like, so did she become an entrepreneur because she just wanted to be like independent and free? Because you didn't start as an entrepreneur. You started out with like with jobs, but like. No, I didn't want to be an entrepreneur. I didn't know there was such a thing to be an entrepreneur. I totally overshot the mark. I, that's what I'm saying. Like I don't have any plans, ironically. I wanted to cook on television. I wanted to be on the Food Network and the head of the Food Network at the time said to me, it will never happen. So then the the housewives showed up and I was, you know, bake and cookies and doing all my stuff. And, and I didn't want to do it at first. And then I thought it's not that easy to get on television and I could promote being a natural food chef. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be some sort of an entertainer, but be myself. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that I would be an entrepreneur, not even close. But if I look back, I thought about all the jobs I had and all the money I made, uh, you know, not a lot of money. I just mean the different Mm -hmm. things that I did from selling pashminas to doing events. Um, so if you look back, it sounds entrepreneurial, but I never wanted to be an entrepreneur. Don't be humble. What's your special? What is, what is, don't be humble. I, I, what is, what is your thing? What is, what is your special? Is it your grind? Is it your personality? Is it your intensity? Is it your. I miss nothing. I miss nothing. You can't, I miss not. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't miss. I don't like, I don't forget. I don't, I'm on it. I'm juggling 7,000 things in my head. I, I've kept capturing them all. I don't stop thinking, which is not fun for me. I mean, I make sleep a discipline and I do it and I do relax and I do vacation, but my brain, it's very hard for me to take it down. And that's the discipline that I have to have. Like mm-hmm. Kevin loves being like running around, doing this, doing that, be here, be that, traveling more. That's not good for me. I would be good at that, but that's not good for me. Mm-hmm. So I value the taking it down a notch, but yeah, I'm not, it's like, I'd be great. Gordon Gecko money never sleeps. I don't want to be that. And I don't want that life, but like, you know, if money never sleeps, then I'm in, you know, then I'm in the right business. Are you happy? Um, yeah, I'm really, I'm, I think peace is happiness and I'm very at peace right now. Yes, I am happy. So it's been, I, I asked this to Has anyone the, ever said to you, no, I'm not happy when you've asked that question. They've hesitated. Yeah, they've hesitated. And I've had some people, I mean, even if you asked me that, you, you, it would depend on the week you asked me and I have a blessed life. I've, you know, I've got beautiful children. I've been married to a girl I went to high school with. I've got hundreds of millions of dollars. I've, um, my health is great. I should be happy every day, but I'm not. And I get asked often if it was worth it. Like, you know, I I wasn't in clubs. I didn't travel a lot. I I sacrificed a lot of things to probably even my health to some extent. I'm not saying you have to do those things to win. In fact, I now know you don't have to. Mm -hmm. But I've had a lot of light nights I didn't sleep, just like you. I've had a lot of waking up with stress. I've had a lot of that. And I'm curious with you. I'm thrilled to hear that you're happy. That's wonderful. Well, I, uh, the, it's the discipline I talked about. I have had higher highs and lower lows, but I don't even like the higher highs because it's just, it's activation. And I'm, I'm, I can sometimes be bored in my life because of 
the discipline of it. And because I'm a very much ironically an introvert, I don't like to go out of my, I don't like to leave my house. I really don't. Um, unless I have to be somewhere. I don't just like go out to lunch or just like walk around dressed up in the day. It's just not who I am. So um, for me, happiness is that balance and that peace and that not the the drastic highs and the lows, which I'm used to from growing up in a very crazy household and life. Mm-hmm. So that is the whole thing I was saying with the discipline about the sleep and the peace and the health and the, you know, I'm, uh, yeah, of course, let's go there. Let's go on that trip. It sounds great. Let's book that trip. And then you get there and then you've done three trips and you're exhausted and you're stripped. I'm trying to avoid that yeah. overall in my whole life, the, the 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 roller coaster. Do you have a ton of confidence? And if you do, how'd you build it? I do have a ton of confidence. Yeah, I see that. I'm not arrogance. They're not the same. Mm-hmm. I'm not arrogant. I'm confident. And I don't know. It, it's upsetting and it's such a waste for people to not be because mm-hmm. it's based on something inside of their head, their psyche, their emotions. And it's it's... I know because I have noise about different things, but not about confidence, like about am I good enough? Can I get that? I just like plow through Mm -hmm. everything, just like walk into it. Oh, I didn't, you know, walk through the liquor business when it was back then all about men, like walk through, didn't even know it was all about men, didn't realize it was run by men, marketed to men, no idea. Boom. Mm -hmm. Um, Podcast space, never listened to a podcast in my life to this day, walk in, Put the microphone on. I think, you know, I'll be decent at this. Yeah. Boom. Three podcast. I just walk through. If you stop, if you think when you stop and you hesitate, that's a lack of confidence and that will get you stuck. What's going to happen? You know, I say to my daughter, she wanted to meet friends this summer and, you know, she doesn't go to camp and there was a girl on the, on the beach and I was frustrated that she wouldn't walk up to her. And I said, listen, let's just play this thing out. Hmm. Cause she said, I want to go to the beach and meet a friend. I said, you walk up. She says, you're disgusting. I never want to see you again. I don't want you to ever come up to me. I hope I never run into you again. She says that. What ha- You didn't know her. You lost nothing. You never see her again. You you don't know who, like, there's nothing. You don't walk up, to, you know, but what happens if she wants to be your best friend? And she's the best friend for the rest of your life. You know, you didn't walk up to her. Nothing's, definitely nothing's going to happen if you just sit and don't walk up to her. See, I love that. You have this thing. Why don't you talk about this for a minute? Because we're not going to have a lot of time left. But I just think you're so... I don't think you realize how uh, profound some of the things are that you think and do. Like, you're like, yeah, of course I do. But that's not normal. That's why we're talking to each other, right? (laughs) And I don't think that – I love when people that have great things about them kind of aren't aware of it. And I think most times when you're really great at something, you're like, it's no big deal because it's something you already own. But you do have that. And you say some brilliant things in your book. Like, I just want to acknowledge you because, like – you know, famous person. I was, I'll crank out this book. Now, nah, it's a good book. Thank you. And there's one little nuance in the book that I, I'll say it my way, but then I want you to say it your way, which will be better, which is that like, I'm a preparation freak. Like I know a lot about you, right? I worked hard to get ready for this thing today. Which I appreciate, which yeah. I, by the way, I had a very famous person recently interview and didn't know like the basic, like the most <laughs> recent basic thing. Yeah. Like yeah. literally, it was probably like, "Oh, how's it doing, the housewives?" It's like, yeah. "What? Well, hello, where have it's you been?" Based. Yeah, and yeah, I, no, got I know, off and I'm like, I know idiot. what you mean. When I get interviewed, um, I feel like the highest form of respect is that they they've prepared, uh, even if yeah. they're not a very good or interview. Or if they made a mistake, but it's sometimes they like I'll sometimes prepare and I'll say, "Oh, you have a sister yeah. named Joanne," or like somehow it was printed wrong in the article. They at yeah. least know that you've done the research. Yeah, you've done yeah. the digging. Yet yeah. at the same time, I think people take that to an extreme because then they use lack of preparedness to take lack of action and in the book you're kind of like hey trust the process a little bit but also like i don't there's been almost nothing i've ever done that i want at i was completely prepared for but i've been willing to step into the unknown and kind of have that internal confidence of i'll figure it out when i get there i'll figure it out when i get there the businesses i built podcasting for example Literally, when I set my social media up, I told my son to set me up. I swear to you on anything. I said, you need to get me one of these InstaFace <laughs> InstaFace accounts. I literally even know what they oh, were. That. Oh, there is it. Oh, God. I, didn't even, yeah. I didn't even know what I was talking about. Right, so, exactly. but just, I'm like, I'm willing to kind of get in, get me in the room. Well, no, you know, something's going on. That happened to me with TikTok before those two girls that have all the followers, Charlie D'Amelio and yeah. the other one. Yeah. I was saying to my uh, social media person, 
I, I like I would be good on TikTok. I think that would be good. And she said it's for eight to thirteen year olds. Don't bother. Mm. And I always regretted not pushing that because it was a gut thing. Yeah, I you know, and get and um Gary V is the one who told me at that time that was going to be the whole thing. I didn't even know what he's talking about. Me and too. you know, that's a lesson too to not be like, oh, who cares? I don't know what that is. You gotta investigate. But you don't need to be completely prepared. You're saying in your business life, like. Have you known yeah. every when you got into the liquor business? Did you didn't know everything? Did you even okay. know where the no. buyer was going to come from? Did you have any idea no, where you're going to do? Packaging? I didn't know what. It, no, no, no. You, I literally was walking my dog from my studio apartment. I had this lawyer that was like literally not. He was a lawyer, but I don't know what kind. He probably was a veterinarian on the side too. He was a very inexpensive lawyer. It's all I could afford. And I was doing this deal with this guy. Now my deals are so complicated. The deal with the guy was like one day an agent wrote it up and a lawyer looked at it. And he said to me, we have to talk. Do you want this to be licensing or equity? Yeah. I said, what? I don't know what that means. What do those two things mean? I love it. He said, licensing is you get them start getting money now. Equity is, you know, you have more risk, but it's your thing. I said, wait, so that's like more skin in the game. He said, yes. I said, okay, this is my ace in the hole. This idea, I want that one mm -hmm. i want that thing i didn't but i've always been good at concepts mm -hmm. so he explained to me what the two things were so i'm like okay now i understand the concept so lawyer man do it that way and the same thing happened when i was negotiating with beam global i the biggest smartest thing the biggest thing i ever did in business was to say wait a minute you want to buy skinny girl but you're a liquor company and skinny girl could be everything it could be lip gloss it could be jeans it could be sunglasses it could be popcorn it could be dressing it could be all these things so they said no we're paying all this money we want to own the brand i said why like because gray goose never did jeans or any of this other stuff it's just a name owned by a liquor company and all they can do with it is liquor so i said why would you don't need the other stuff you'll have to tro you'll have to trust me as a partner that i'm not going to exploit these other categories and ruin your brand but i'll have to trust you as a partner that you're not going to ruin the brand Whoa. and destroy what i want to build so that was a concept so I didn't have to know anything to know that. It was just like an idea in my head. So Ooh. then you go and, you know, listen to all the experts and crowdsource information. And then you sign the dotted line and you make the decision. Never knew anything about anything I do. Nothing. Wow. That blows my mind. And um, it makes it more impressive to me. Nothing. Actually, not a book, not a podcast, not a TV show, not in anything. Not, and I'm like, and I do tons of deals and have amazing ideas. And I'm running circles around people, but nothing. Knew nothing about any of this stuff. Didn't so even pay attention in college. So do you... <laughs> Me either, by the way. Uh, how has that changed your perspective on successful people? So for me, I this is really powerful. I actually hope this becomes one of the clips what we're, I'm about to ask you because I'm really interested in your, your feedback on this. I really thought, by the way, there are brilliant people in the world. No question about it. There are there are people that are there no, are. literally brilliant. We, I am not one of them. Nor am I. And um, by the way, I you're making me feel better. Met, you know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I could see yeah, that about you. It only <laughs> takes about four minutes to figure it out. But what has surprised me overall is neither are most of the people. In other words, most people that I've met that are successful on the surface impressed me less. Yet as I got to know them, I was more impressed because they won with just average abilities and skills. And so um, take someone in that's, I'm picturing like a young woman or man listening to this right now. They're 25, they're 30 years old. That's still young to me. And they're like, I'm intimidated. And I think this is a huge factor. I'm intimidated to get into that room to make a deal. I'm intimidated, afraid to start a business, even have a conversation. I don't know anything either. These people are smart. I have found Mark's an exception. I think Mark actually is a brilliant Mark dude. Who? Cuban. You mentioned Cuban very, earlier. Very yeah. smart. And like Kevin, his, by the way, is very smart. He's a very, very, he is smart. A very smart guy, but I think in a different way. Barbara's been on my show as well. And I mean this, I Barbara's one being she's a very smart woman, but I, I don't I, I don't even think Barbara would tell you that she's got a you know, she's she's not she didn't win because of intellect, right? She she won because of hard work and timing. So I understand. And, it's all different. Yeah. No, yeah, it, I'll tell you something. Mark is extremely smart, but also very well read like he he does a lot of research yeah. he knows what the hell he's talking about mm -hmm. um i gotta tell you kevin's re i was walking in thinking the way that you think about kevin that he's smart and he's successful mm -hmm. kevin's really i'm sh shocked by how smart he is mm -hmm. he, he's really smart in the right way is he smart like, or is he experienced after 30 or 40 years of being a business yes but, but, uh, yeah. both. but, I, but I think mark's a little of that but yes it's a different story but yeah but but 
the way that someone's mind would listen, Kevin's no spring chicken. Mm -hmm. He's there. It's not the same as Shark Tank. This show is us in there 10 hours, brains fried, and him just, yep. it's being on. It's not just experience, it's being on and quick. Kevin is like that. Mark is like that. I am like that. I can't say, I don't, I can't name five other people like that. Okay, but I do. But and I think what you just said is really important. I think one of the six, I've never said this out loud in my life. I think one of the successful traits in people is their ability at some point to process information to make decisions more quickly. Exactly. Decisiveness. Decisiveness. Boom. Do you agree Very with that? hundred percent. Uh, that's, but I'm not decisive about, I, I will be in the, I'm, I only sweat the small stuff about like, uh, a purse or spaghetti mm -hmm. or what are we eating or what are we doing? Where are we going with the hotel? Like that is, that's muck. Yep. But in like real sh two seconds. Me too. Just, I, I feel like this. That's, I, I actually think, take an NFL quarterback. Like what makes them right? better? Their ability to process information yes. faster and call a shot. Because they're playing chess and checkers at the same exact yeah, time. Yeah. And I think that's business. I actually think that's life. Like, and I also, it, tell me if you agree with this. I'm okay if I didn't even make the right decision because I'm just going to execute my plan, whatever it is, even if it's a flawed plan, so aggressively. Oh, by the way, yes, that's what you said earlier that I forgot to respond to is that yeah. when you're failing and when you, you know, winning, when things are hard, when you're at your low, that's when you learn everything because that's when it's like you've got that car and you, you've got a loose horse or whatever the analogy is and you have got to like hold the steering wheel, but not too tight. Because you're gonna blow it all up and not too loose where you're walking away. You gotta steer. Like that's how a person like deals with an, a cancellation crisis. Like mm -hmm. how do you deal with that? Mm -hmm. Like, and you will learn so much. And if you treat it like a gift, which it is, then that's where all the gold is. That's where all the gems of a successful person are in that sh time when it's like the rubber meeting the road. That's when you will learn everything. Mm -hmm. So people have to pay more attention to that stuff. Sometimes I don't want it to happen, but when that's when I get awake and like lit and like strategic and really combat mode. Very more good. Room. What more have you room. what what surprised you about doing the show with these entrepreneurs? Is there a common line? I mean the one I watched, they were three different episodes, very different businesses. But is there you would live for the show. There are some there are people with hundred something million dollar businesses that are like hmm. not knowing what to do. And also when we first sat down, I mean, I didn't know what they should do. Like you got to get granular and think about it and pull the taffy. And then it came clear every time. For some reason, we never, we never weren't totally resolved and didn't give a great verdict. I think it'll be interesting to hear what the people say on the other side. Hmm. I think in most cases they'll be thrilled. Unlike Shark Tank, which is a different show where they're like pissed they didn't get an investment or something. Mm -hmm. I think they'll mostly be happy. Um, what have I learned? That it's case law. That the more, you know, all business is case law. Mm -hmm. You do something one time, it works. You have that in your tool chest. Oh, you do something, part of that, that failed or was just not the best. That's part of your tool, tool chest. Now take yourself on to the next one. Case law. Remember that happened and the other thing happened. Let's do that this way. So the more deals you're making, to your point about Kevin, the more interactions you're having with different types of people, uh, the more business negotiations and weird tentacles and little deal points that come up that are so weird in contracts that you deal with, it's case law. So you mm -hmm. keep taking that with you and that's how you become older and wiser. That's why there's the college debate. And that's why I think if you're not going to get a master's or, you know, your MBA or be a doctor, I'm not, I'm not pro college for the, for the debt and all that. I'm really not. I've moved there. School. It's funny you say that because I've moved there lately and both my kids are in college right now and they know that I feel so I'm glad they're there. They're both flourishing, but more but it's also could be purgatory sometimes you might not think your kids are ready or you want a place to put them you're not ready to jam them right into life yeah but you know? but more and more i'm with you you walk out of there with a couple hundred grand of debt or just get into business and start Whoa. something or get a job and learn something That's that it. you could start a business on how has your we're going to run out of time but i want to ask you a couple more things um i've really enjoyed this i like i like that it's it's the intensity level like there's no fluff with you <laughs> which I really, really love. Like there's like legit zero fluff and I'm at, we'll, we'll, <laughs> no, we'll, fat. no, I love it. And there's, there'll be no editing here, which will be easy too. But I'm curious if your idea of success has changed and I just love people. So I picture this young girl heading out to LA. I'm going to be an actress. It's 1992. You end up nannying and, you know, you, you know, you're like a, on the, your show runner, whatever the heck you were oh, doing. For Steve, Steve, La Scala, don't forget major. Yeah, that's right. Salad, that's true too. That was big just, time. 
It's massive. I got a free salad every day. Anybody who goes there knows they don't do that anymore. Like an $18 <laughs> salad every day and $8 an hour salary. You, Salads and salaries. New book. I know, it's, I know it's your story, but when you hear that, isn't that sort of mind-blowing? Like, like – it was a big deal to get a free salad. It's like, oh, it, was, it wasn't a hundred years ago. It probably feels No, like it wasn't. It, it was it's amazing. I'm proud of myself. It's really nice. It's true. It's really, really nice um, to go do it. But it's just like blood, sweat, and tears. Just, just do it. Nike had the best slogan in the history of mankind. Just do it. Yeah. Do you, But is your idea of what success looks like changed? Mine has. Like, I used to really, it, it's so easy once you have some money to go, ah, you know, that's not the only way to be successful try living without some. And that's hard. I get that. But like, I have a sister who's, she's diabetic. She's uh, my middle sister, Andrea. She, she is legally blind now from diabetes. She can't drive, but she can see a little bit, but, but she's a school teacher and she helps these little kids every single day. And she's doing literally what you said, like her jam is nurturing and teaching and loving on people. I feel like she's more successful than I am. My idea of what, to me, success has become whatever your vision is for your life, you become it, whatever it is. And to me, that's success, your blueprint for your life, and you end well, up building you, a life that matches it. To me, that's yeah. success, regardless of what it is. Yeah, but yes, but you may not, you may write those things down. And then when you realize them, they may not be exactly what you thought they were. So you have to get more specific. So it could be fame money, family, right? But then if you get more specific, so for me, I only do things that I want to do, that I love to do, that I'm inspired by doing. And I have to be very strict because pe people are pulling me in every different direction because I can do anything that I want in business or entertainment. And I really can pretty much, there's nothing I can't do. There's nobody I can't get on the phone. And I don't let the tail wag the dog anymore because I want to be with my daughter all of the time that she's not in school and that I have her. That's my personal choice. And that's the way that I live. I've never had a nanny. And I, I love that. That's not coming back that time. So I don't want to go off and do something that might take months away or kill myself doing. I want to do exactly what I want to do. So everything that I'm doing in business that you see me doing it's because I want to be there. I was making a lot of money doing housewives and um, I chose to do money court. I did that solely. I didn't know what they were going to pay me. Mm -hmm. I just said, I like the concept. I want to do that. I, the first year of uh, the podcast, just be, I ended up spending money on that podcast because the deal was upside down and I didn't like the way it was being handled. And I spent money the first year. It cost me money. I didn't care. I knew I was good at it. I knew it'd be successful. Now it's, it's a ton of money, mm. but I do things only that I, because I want to do them, but not because of the money or not the money. I wanted to go down to Florida and do business conversations with Kevin O'Leary for 10 days and help small businesses. Oh, not small and large mm. to help businesses. I wanted to sit down and talk and reflect about the housewives and talk to amazing, interesting people on my podcast. I just want to do it. So I'm doing, it. I want to around and talk about eyeshadow on Instagram. And so I became successful at it. So I just do exactly what I want to do. But do you think to give advice to somebody who's up and coming, they probably need to do some things they don't want to do to get where they need to get. Do you agree with that? hundred percent. But that's the point. I used to go, I am the least social person. I used to go to anything that came in an envelope because that would be currency to go there and connect and give my card and get on, you know, try to be a chef or try to sell my healthy cookies or try to whatever. I hustled so crazy. You have no idea. I went to, I hate going out of my house. I went to everything. I didn't even know I hated going because the goal was so strong that it wasn't an option. Not until I got to have the choice that I realized I hate going to anything. Mm -hmm. Like you don't understand. I've, I, I didn't go to Ascot in, in London when the horse named Frankel named after my father won 14 out of 14, it's final race one at Ascot and the queen was there. I didn't go. They invited me to go. I didn't go to the Super Bowl when my fiance's parents, best friend, Robert Kraft, one, I was like, I'd rather eat be home with Brynn eating wings. So trust me, getting here, hustling and going to all those things I had to go to and be bull and take my picture was all part of the hustle. Hated that. I love that. Me too. I'm like room service on the road if I can. I'm like sure. I'm, I'm nuts like that. All right. Last question. It's kind of open ended. And by the way, everybody, before I ask that, make sure that you go watch Money Court Wednesdays, 10 p.m. CNBC. 
pick up business is personal. I'm serious. And if you're not following Bethany, it's a really entertaining and informative follow on Instagram. It's really, really good stuff. So just broad question. I just like asking somebody this, not that it would probably happen, but let's assume it did. You left the studio right now. You're like, Hey, I'm going to go grab a Starbucks before I get back to the house, whatever it is. And mm -hmm. someone runs into you at that Starbucks. They say, Holy crap. It's Bethany Frankel. I am working somewhere. I don't want to be right now, or I'm in a relationship. I don't want to be in. I'm not where I want to be. And I know you've been many places in your life you didn't want to be. What would you advise me to do? Is there some advice you'd give me? And by the way, I get asked these questions all the time. It's so difficult when you don't know somebody's situation. But I do feel like if I didn't ask you that with millions of people listening to this who all really were excited you were going to be on the show today, I'd make a mistake because I know they'd want me to ask you. I'm not where I want to be. How do I, is there a first step, a thought, a process that I need to undertake to begin to change my life? I would say if you don't know what to do, sit still hmm. um, to be in the present, to meditate, to give your sight, to, the, the inclination is to activate and stress and think and work the problem. I would say to try to breathe and step away from the problem because all the best ideas come when you're relaxed when, you know, all my good ideas come from sleep to wake when you're like just waking up, it's like, boom, I shoot out of bed like a cannon with the ideas mm. and the text. I'm that person who would text you. I don't give a shit if it was Monday. <laughs> I would text you at 6 a.m. on Monday yeah. and you don't have to answer that, obviously, but I would, that's when I would text you. It's funny you say that I'll just a second at last. I met Wayne Dyer and uh, I'm sure you remember Wayne Dyer. Do you remember who that is? He's a big thought leader. You know, you don't. Okay. I've heard of the name. Yeah. Anyway, when I met him, he said, hey, when you wake up in the morning or if you wake up in the middle of the night with an idea, just start writing it down mm -hmm. because that's some divine inspiration from yes. from waking you and to, and to get quiet when you're concerned or when you're worried. And that's exactly what I do. I get away from problems and I try to see if I can come back to them with a different perspective. I really liked today. I kind of knew it. Thank you. And oh, thank you. I, I kind of knew it. And I really love the show. Like, I don't watch much TV. I don't watch. I, I have a TV show and I don't watch a lot of it. And yours was entertaining. Like, I, it, it flew by. I'm like, man, I'm going to watch another one. I have to tune in to see it. So you guys, you wanted her on. I got her. Bethany Frankel. Share it with the planet. Bethany, thanks for being here today. Everybody, make sure you get Bethany's book. Go get the power of one more. Keep growing the fastest growing show in the world. God bless you all. Max out your life.